Hi, everybody. My name's Chloe, and I'm 17 years old. Check this out. Could you do that? Of course, it's not that easy. I'm just very flexible. I can do a lot of unusual things with my body. You've probably heard a lot of stories about flexible people. Some of them perform on stage, others set all sorts of records. But you'll never guess what I used my flexibility for. One day, I decided to go to the cinema with my friends. We bought popcorn and soft drinks and suddenly realized that we didn't have enough money for one of the tickets and we didn't know what to do. And then I came up with an idea. I suggested that one of the guys carry me into the auditorium in his backpack. How are you gonna fit in there? He asked. That's for me to be concerned about, I said. And I bent myself in all sorts of crazy ways and I squeezed into his backpack. My friends were quite shocked, but the guy put me on his back and carried me into the auditorium all the same. No one stopped him, of course, because it never even occurred to anyone that a person could fit into a backpack. Once we were inside, I got out, and we had some great fun watching the movie and eating popcorn. However, after we left the cinema, a strange man came up to me and said with a smile that he'd seen my unusual trick. I got scared, but the man said he wouldn't tell anyone. He said his name was Mr. Thompson and that he was a producer. The man said that he worked with people with my unusual abilities, and he would liked my little display very much. He offered for me to work with them, but what'll I be doing? Mr. Thompson said that I would find out soon enough, and if I succeeded, I would make some good money. He invited me to come to his office the following day. Wow, I'd never even dreamed of something like that. Although I didn't know what I would have to do, I was very happy that I got a chance to earn money with my skills. Of course, I agreed. The next day, I went to meet the producer. He had a small office that looked more like a steward unit. Boxes and some other equipment were stacked against the walls. He greeted me quite cheerfully and sat me down in a chair. He asked me what I wanted to do and how much money I wanted to earn. I boldly told him that I had a unique ability. I was very flexible and I could do things with my body that no one else could. I wanted to earn enough to support myself and my parents by using it. The producer liked my answer a lot and offered for me to work with him. But what is the job exactly? I asked. You'll find out when the time is right, Mr. Thompson said. And now, let's go for a ride. I was super curious, so I agreed. We drove to a very rich neighborhood and stopped in front of a luxury mansion. He pointed at it and asked, See this house? Could you get in and carry something valuable out? I thought it was a very strange thing to ask, but the producer explained that it was a friend's house and he wanted to prank him with my help. I had always liked pranks, so I agreed. I had no trouble getting over the fence, through the bars and past the narrow window. Anyone else wouldn't have gotten past the first obstacle. My flexibility allowed me to do everything quickly and easily. Once inside, I looked around and saw some jewelry on the bedside table. I guess Mr. Thompson was talking about these, I decided, and I swept all the jewelry into my pocket. I got out of the house just as easily, leaving no trace, and got back into the producer's car. He looked at me questioningly, and I showed him the jewelry I'd taken from the house. Mr. Thompson was very happy and praised me. You have such incredible abilities. You're so smart. I thought at that moment that he was very nice. I'd never been praised like that before. And I thought maybe I could even date him, even though he was twice my age. In the end, he handed me a stack of cash. None of my friends were making that much money. And all in just 10 minutes of work. I felt right then that I wanted to meet Mr. Thompson again. So when he asked if I was ready to work with him, I gave him a happy nod. Since then, we began to meet a lot. He told me where to go and what to take. I got good money from it and I learned a lot from him. Like in which house a dog will be waiting for me, how to disable an alarm system, and where to find all the most valuable things in a house. Mr. Thompson kept saying that we were only playing pranks and the house owners themselves were asking him to get into their houses. I didn't understand why they would need it, but I trusted my producer. I liked him more and more by the day. Then one day, something happened. One evening, we drove to a rich neighborhood again and he pointed at an office. He said that I was to find the safe inside that was kept unlocked. Our client wants us to take everything out of that safe, he said. Well, let's do it. I easily climbed onto the second floor and crawled through the bars. The window was open and I got into the office. There was no one inside, so I began searching for the safe. Just as Mr. Thompson had said, it was unlocked. I found a lot of money inside. I'd never seen so much money in my life. I picked up my bag and started to put it away when I heard someone's footsteps. Mr. Thompson didn't say that anyone would be inside. Just in case, I decided to hide. I looked around and saw a small cabinet in the corner. The footsteps were getting closer. I opened the cabinet and I quickly squeezed in. The door creaked and a security guard came into the office. Who's there? He asked. 
and began to look around. He must have heard some noise and come to check if everything was all right. I watched through a crack as the security guard walked around the office. Of course, he wouldn't look in the cabinet. After all, it'd be impossible for an adult to hide in it. Or at least, that's what I was thinking as I was waiting for the guard to leave. I saw him head for the door and I exhaled. Then, the cabinet door opened and I saw the guard's face right in front of me. His eyes were round with horror as if he hadn't expected to see anyone there. I watched as the guard stepped back in fright, tripped and fell to the floor. As he was falling, he hit the edge of the table and turned it over on himself. Immediately, sparks flew. Uh, apparently, there was some sort of short circuit. I quickly got out of the cabinet and grabbed the bag with money. The guard was lying on the floor motionless. Smoke was rising from the overturned things. I needed to go. I made sure the guard was alive and I ran for the exit. Once outside, I looked back and saw thick smoke rising from the office windows. People began to gather around to watch the fire. I was happy I'd gotten out of there in one piece. But then, I remembered that there was a security guard still lying on the floor inside. I waited for him to come to and run out of the building. But as the minutes went by, flames could be seen in the office windows, and the guard was still not coming out. What was I supposed to do? I was about to ask Mr. Thompson for help when I saw him quickly drive off as soon as sirens became heard in the distance. What was going on? Was he leaving me behind? But I had other things to worry about. I couldn't wait any longer. I threw my bag into the bushes and ran back to the office. I heard people shouting, wait, where are you going? But I couldn't let the security guard die. The office was full of smoke. I started <laughs> coughing and couldn't see anything. I was moving literally by touch. And then finally I found the security guard. He was still lying on the floor unconscious. I grabbed him by the arms and began to pull him towards the exit. But he was so heavy I could barely move him. The fire was getting closer and I had to hurry. As soon as we were outside, I collapsed. But what was this? People were running up to me and they began to praise me for such a brave act. Through the crowd, I saw a van of a local TV company pull up and reporters jumped out. I realized that they would start to ask me questions I wouldn't be able to answer. After all, I was starting to have doubts about what Mr. Thompson and I had been doing. That's why I quietly blended into the crowd of onlookers. With the last of my strength, I'd found the bag I'd thrown into the bushes, and I went home. I felt so uneasy. The next morning, I turned on the TV and saw the news. They were telling about a night fire in an office, and a mysterious heroine who had saved a security guard from a burning building, and then disappeared. Even the mayor of the city appeared on the broadcast to say that the survivor would receive a fair reward. I was sitting there thinking, who was I really? A hero? Or a naive fool deceived by a smart criminal? That's my whole story. Only now have I realized what I'd been really doing. Those weren't pranks on rich people. But what should I do next? Give the money back and become a hero? Or keep it and remain the person that I am now? Please, tell me in the comments what you would do if you were in my place.